historical status of Tibet as an independent state uh, has not been uh, pushed to the level that we would have liked to. That they cannot just change history. History is in the past. The second uh, uh, is a message to the international community that without understanding Tibet's history, how can they parrot what the Chinese government wants them to say? There is a lot of discrepancy and holes in China's logic towards history. Tibet and India, we have age-old relations. We consider ourselves as an extension of Indian culture. This is uh, part of the uh, strategy that we adopted since we came into uh, this job uh, from May 2021. Uh, the first time I managed to travel to the United States was April 2022 because the pandemic was going on. And uh, at that time, uh, we did inform our friends in the Congress, particularly Speaker Pelosi at that time, that this is our change in strategy, that we need to focus on the extremes. When we talk about middle way, then there has to be extremes. Without extremes, there cannot be middle way. And if you have no recognition for the extremes, then there is no value for middle way. So extreme could be many dimensions. It could be political, social, economic, educational, whatever. But in this case, the, the political extremes are one extreme is the present situation of Tibet, uh, occupied Tibet under the repressive communist government, which we keep talking about to other governments all the time, whether it's the Central Tibetan Administration or non-governmental organizations, whoever is advocating for Tibet. But the other extreme, which is the historical status of Tibet as an independent state, uh, has not been uh, pushed to the level that we would have liked to. So. Uh, I say uh, we have four reasons for doing this. One is to send a message to China that they cannot just change history. History is in the past, and uh, it's bet best left to historians. And the second uh, uh, is a message to the international community that without understanding Tibet's history, how can they parrot what the Chinese government wants them to say over the last 60, 65 years? And that is why every country that has connection with Tibet keeps repeating the statement that Tibet is part of PRC. On the other hand, they keep telling the international community that Tibet has been part of China since ancient times. Now, when is ancient times? 7th century, 13th century, 18th century, or before that now? Uh, day before yesterday, one Chinese expert said, oh, from the Qin time to the Han time, and those are BCs, early ADs, where there was no connection between Tibetans and Chinese. Seventh century, they are not able to prove it. T Tibet was at its peak in its empire. The Tibetan empire extended from Xiangyang, or Xiang today, to present-day Uzbekistan. And uh, the Tibetan king had the power to call for alliance from both Nepal and China, you know, their princesses for, as consorts. And then 13th century, we established relations with the Mongols much before China, China was invaded by the Mongols, Kublai Khan. We had established this, uh, Sajapas have established relations with the Mongols. In, and now Chinese claim that Tibet became part of China in 13th century, uh, saying it's 1247. Whereas 1247, we established relation with uh, Kublai Khan's father, and Kublai invaded China in 1271, and that is the period in Chinese history what they call as Yuan Dynasty from 1271 to 1368. So there is a lot of discrepancy and holes in China's logic towards history, and they have been shifting the goalposts all the time, and uh, much of. The Sino-Tibet conflict uh, or dispute uh, is uh, seen from the prism of human rights from, by the international community. Is there human rights violation on Tibet, whether it's in terms of political space or whether it's in terms of religious freedom or language or way of life or protection of Tibet's environment or minority rights, indigenous rights. These are components of the whole of the issue on Tibet, which is an uh, uh, issue that's related to its people and its history. So this R Tibet Resolve Act focuses on one part, uh, the uh, countering China's disinformation on Tibetan history, its people, and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So that, in that sense, uh, the contents of those uh, laws, um, uh, the first issue is that it's an unresolved uh, conflict. Because China thinks Tibet is already resolved, that they have managed to convince the world that Tibet is part of PRC, and uh, that is being challenged for the first time. 
they keep saying there is not one single country who recognizes the independence of Tibet. The law it does not say we recognize independence, but it challenges uh, China's narratives that they have not accepted that Tibet is part of uh, China since ancient times. So these combined, the Tibetan people's right to self-determination uh, and all that, and defining Tibetan territory in the fourth uh, part of this bill, these are all acting against China's narrative, and which uh, is a new tool in our hand. And now with this new tool, how do we work with other governments around the world? That is why it's important. Will you be engaging with other countries to bring the similar law? Definitely, definitely. Now we would expect the United States to lend a shoulder uh, to, to uh, work with like-minded countries because that is something that the United States have always been talking and we can reach out only to the free world, uh, not, not countries uh, that have alliance or whose authorities are quite similar to what China is. So we can't reach to just those countries, but we can reach out to the free world and see who uh, would be willing to adopt similar positions. What do you think will be India's position in this? <coughs> I think a lot of uh, analysis has been done during the congressional visit to Dharamsala where a lot of credit is given to the Indian government for allowing them to visit India, visit Dharamsala, make those statements and they on their way back met with Prime Minister Modi ji and uh, also the uh, uh, our foreign minister so I think in Taiwan also it's being interpreted as validation of this visit to Dhamsala by the Indian government. So Indian government also keeps this interest in mind. I have always said that no country will leave aside their national interest and pick up India, Tibetan national interest. So as long as uh, that nation's uh, security interests and other interests aligns with Tibetan interests, and uh, Tibet and India, uh, we have age-old relations. We consider ourselves as an extension of Indian culture, our language, our religion, uh, the script of our language and religion. Uh, ca all came from India. We consider ourselves as an extension of Indian culture because we transliterated every available Sanskrit and Pali text into Tibetan. And we are the only country to do that. So we are a repository of one part of ancient Indian wisdom and we are very grateful to the Indian government uh, at the most difficult period of our history to give refuge here in India to His Holiness and now there are about 72,000 Indian Tibetans in India. So, but I'm in no position, I have always said, I'm in no position to advise the Indian government. There are a lot of brainy people in the government and they know exactly what to do. And as long as they feel that Tibet's interest aligns with India's interest, then I'm sure. And I'm sh since about a year ago, there have been a lot of noises, not, not, not just one year, because of China's belligerence on Indian border. And there are a lot more noises uh, or voices about uh, uh, India having to recalibrate its Tibet's policy. Uh, lastly, sir. Uh, if, I, if I may talk about mm. Dalai Lama, how is his health and mm. when is he expected to be back in the Amshala? The dates are not fixed because it will all depend on how, uh, how well His Holiness uh, recovers and what other engagements might uh, appear. Uh, so right now it's, uh, the date is not fixed. I'm leaving tonight to the United States to uh, thank all the Congress uh, men and women who supported this, particularly the leaders who supported this. And then I will also meet with some of the community members who have, uh, whom I have promised to visit two times in, a, in five years. And then I will have an audience with His Holiness by month end of this. And then uh, we'll uh, be able to evaluate the uh, actual situation.